the next assessment we're going to do is um, an assessment to measure hand strength. And basically, you're going to use what is known as the dynamometer. And um, just to kind of let you know, just the, the caveat for the dynamometer, is um, you've got two different um, readings in there, two different number readings. The outside, the outer ring is in kilograms. The inner ring is in pounds. And so when reading this, we typically, for our norm range, um, we have associated it to pounds, and so you'll want to always read the inside number and not the outside number. If you should read the outside number and, and catch yourself, stay consistent with it and just know it's going to need to be converted over to pounds in order to establish or to see where those norms fall. Um, the other caveat is you will see that there's five different settings on the dynamometer. Dynamometer. For females, you want it on the second setting, males on the third setting because of the hand um, span. So just kind of wanting to know, and how you um, basically um, change settings is this little ring down here, you flip it back and able to take it out and put it back in, and then just clip it in place. Okay, so when testing your individual, what you want to make sure is the appropriate test position is arm at your side, bend at your elbow, and um, that's how you're going to want to see that test position. The thing you want to avoid is you don't want them out here, you don't want them out here, you just want them in and like that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to test hand strength. I'm going to pull your chair out just a little bit. We're going to actually test both hands. What hand um, do you write with? Right here. Right here. So what you want to do is always start with the dominant hand. Um, where this might be a factor is if you have had somebody who maybe has had a neurological event and um, does not or is not able to use one hand, you wouldn't test in that. So don't don't try to force it. Um, so what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you hold my little tool just like this, arm at your side. You're going to squeeze as hard as you can. That's not going to budge, but it will record how much pressure. squeeze. Perfect. Okay. So then what I'm doing is I'm reading the inside. So she scored about 64 on that one. So 64 pounds. Now we're going to do the left hand squeeze as hard as you can. Perfect. And here's 65 pounds. Normally I write these down. I'm not writing it down today, but I would have right, left, and I record because what we're going to do is we're going to do a trial of three and we'll alternate. Test her cognition and see if she remembers all three of these. <laughs> <laughs> That's the true test. 62. One more each hand. Okay. Okay. How did you pull that one? That's a 35. <laughs> Let's redo that. <laughs> So see how, yeah, <laughs> you can cause a redo because you're like, wait a minute, that's an offer. So, um, and pretty much what ends up happening is there is a little, um, oh, I guess a little needle that follows the actual pressurized needle. And so that's what you're actually seeing. And then of course you want to make sure you put it down every time. And then using those scores, you would take for the right hand, the average of the three. And then again, for the left hand, the average of the three. And then there are norm sheets that are available. And so what you want to make sure is you know the person's age and, of course, their gender. And you look to see there are ranges that um, are um, for the right hand and ranges for the left hand. And so it may be like 45 to 90. And you want to make sure that the average of the three is following, falling somewhere within that range. And if it is considered within that range, then it's norm. So there's no reason why you would want to focus on any hand strengthening um, because they have adequate hand strength. They're, they're considered norm, with it, with norm for age and gender. Um, and the reason that's so important is, is only if they fall below, and that below is what is considered two standard deviations below the norm, would it be considered a problem? And that's when you could work on in like your clinics, hand strengthening kinds of things. Um, so yeah.
Yeah, so I can do a lot of background.